Last time we spoke on uh, Project Card Spray, we, I showed you how to put the full start assembly together. Uh, the link will be at the top. Uh, if you want to go watch that video. Uh, today we're going to focus on putting the camshaft in and getting it timed up. See if we can get a spark out of it. First thing we're going to do is I'm going to try and get this inspection port open. But in order to do that, I need to make some room to get my screwdriver directly over it. I'm going to pull this outer cover and the mechanical CDI holder. I don't know what you would call it. But, so I'm going to pull that off. I showed y'all the inside of this last time. It's pretty dirty. Screwdriver don't want to work. Oh, let's put this stuff over. You know, there's supposed to be two bolts, three bolts that hold this to the motor. They're gone. I'll have to locate some more for the time being. See how dirty it is from splashback from the rain. And I only have one bolt in the CDI cover itself. But I'm trying to pop this off. Uh, See where they damaged that seal when they pulled the cam out. If you look inside here, it, it doesn't look anything like the outside of the motor. So, I mean, I still feel like there's hope for it. Once we, you know, get, get it all nice and cleaned up, hopefully we can get signal. I'm going to start off uh, spraying this thing with a little bit of WD-40. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a booger to get off. I know you got a lot of guys that say spraying WD-40 at a bolt or nut is not going to work because you got to have an air gap or whatever. But I've I've always had luck just just wetting it with some WD or something. It, it gets in there and it penetrates no matter what. So we're going to try and see if I can get this inspection port out. My screwdriver. Not the best. Strength didn't do it. Let's see if we can do some light tapping. Sometimes you can shock it loose. having any luck on that so use this other trick have to put it on the corner try and get some of course it's gonna cut grooves in it but you can always get another one right Aluminum seems like it's awful soft. May have to try a new approach. Yeah. Okay, so we're not getting anywhere. Let's see if I got a better flathead. Okay, so instead of getting this inspection port out, which I cannot. I might be able to weld to it depending on if it's aluminum or not. If it's, you know, I'm not even, I'm not even gonna worry about it because we just found uh, the timing mark and the fire mark on the outside of the of the flywheel. So I'm gonna clean it up. See if I can't show y'all. You can see this little arrow here. And at first I was looking at the fire and the, the T mark on the inside. And then I realized a little further down behind the pool, you could see a F and a, a T right there. So I'm going to clean it up. Alright, that's it right there. You can see it. 
Yeah. All right. Well, I know cleaning the outside is not going to affect the way it runs, but we'll try our best. The only reason I really wanted to pull that inspection port out is the way I could, so I could get this drum line on top and maybe clean up and get a good contact point here for the sensor. But we'll just keep running this wire brush in. See if we can maybe we can still get one. Yeah, that fits good. Can you hold your finger on it? Appreciate it. It's not the best cleaning. Sure, we'll get the job done. We'll get this wiped up and we'll go from there. Okay, in order to find out whether you're at top dead center, you will need a, you'll see a F and a T mark. You're going to want the F mark line up with this knife. When that F mark lines up with this notch, your piston head should be all the way to the top of the cylinder or as far as it's going to go up. Over here on the camshaft sprocket, there is a little indentation, a little circle right here on this side. Now, if you're on the F mark with the piston up and this is backwards, you are you're completely fine honestly it doesn't matter which way that little round circle goes as long as it's straight back or straight forward it's still gonna run and you're not gonna be able to notice the difference but now if this this little circle mark is all the way forward and your pistons all the way down and you're on fire you're 180 degrees out so we're gonna establish top dead center and with no carburetor, I, I suspect there's water down inside. We're gonna pull the spark plug out. I'm gonna have you roll the, roll the crank over. I'll hold the timing gear. And then I'll let you guys see what come out of the spark plug hole. You wanna look over here real quick. We'll go ahead and get the spark plug out. 18 millimeter. Somebody used a D. A H A. There's plenty of rust on the spark plug. I see it's wet. So more than likely there's water in it. Yeah, on the way out, it drips some water. So I'm gonna hold this. And we're gonna lean the bike over. A little more. I'm gonna put my finger in this time and the cam sprocket. Now go ahead and roll it over. See that water come out? Yeah, see, that's not good. Uh, it could have destroyed the rings. You know, uh, it could be, you know, stuck, seized to the wall. The piston's just moving freely in there. Okay, you can. So we got a good bit of the water out. We're going to go ahead and stick something in there. See if the piston goes all the way to the top on the F with that dot facing the front of the engine. Right, we're going to start out by making sure the crankshaft is on the F with this lined up with this groove here. I hold hold the cam sprocket the way it don't bind up inside the motor. Turn it. Is that pretty close? Or any go up or down? Any? Oh, that's right on. Right on? Mm -hmm. Where is that, that circuit? Can you see it? Uh, it straight ahead or you think we're off? No, uh, we're off just a little bit. It's almost right, now, apparently off. I'll set this down easy. We're gonna see if the piston's at the top. So, come over here. Have a little stick. Mm -hmm. Something that if it breaks off, it's not really hurt anything. We won't stick it in this hole. I feel the top of the piston. Let's see if I can't put a little light on it. I see the piston. So if that's the case, then we're off, like like you said, a tooth or two. We will work on getting that. All right. 
Tighten those off. What you gonna do? Stick one finger up here. Well, we're gonna do the bottom. So roll it up off of the chain. Just a hair. And we're gonna go. We're gonna go one, two. A little, a little tedious. My hands are awful big. What I'm gonna do is hold this chain up. It's gonna be hard for you to see it, but I'm gonna pull this sprocket away from this chain if I can. We are going to go down a two. Okay. Now spin it, spin that crankshaft real quick. All right, hold it. Get this thing set. Go back. Yeah, go backwards. A little more, a little more. All right, now put it back on the F. See the line for the F? Uh -huh. We're going to get it lined directly up with this. The F will be slightly to the right. That's it. Now, if you look, that little circle on the camshaft sprocket is now facing completely horizontal with this. I would say... I'd say that's right on the money. Now we're gonna see if we can work this camshaft. In. Set this down a second. Want the top dead center. Some people like a little oil on the cam when it goes in. Uh, I'm not opposed to it, but I'm not really concerned about it at this moment. It's not a it's not a Corvette engine. So we're gonna work work this thing in little by little until I can get it to agree with me. One of them valves in there and got it. If you can work past it. Come on. I felt something drop in. Okay, so uh, the can fault me for a minute. The lobes need to be facing backwards whenever you go in. It's just a tight fit. Keep in mind, I had to locate bolts for this camshaft, so they're not going to be 100% matching. I'll use what, what we got. Now they'll hang in there. Uh, but yeah, we got the cam in. Your time and mark is. You know, horizontal with the F. And we're gonna put a mechanical CDI on it, uh, ignition coil, pulse generator. And, uh, let's see if we can't get this thing to fire up. All right, so we got the cam shaft sprocket mated to the cam. Two nice ugly bolts sitting there. Uh, now we're gonna have to mount the mechanical CDI holder onto it. Also had to find bolts for it. Uh, two for now. That's good enough until we can figure out whether it's going to run or not. But until then, uh, I need to go get this piece cleaned up. Alright, we got our mechanical CDI holder pretty well cleaned up. And where they damaged the, the that seal right here, I imagine it's from the camshaft pin. I'm going to show you real quick. Mine does not have one. <laughs> That's another part on I had to locate. Or you can 
probably forge one I don't recommend it just go ahead and get you another one off of parts bike so we'll slide this over cam pin's not in I mean it's not going to damage it any more than it already is this thing nice shoved on you heard it hit line up your holes they pretty well lined up and then when you screw in there's one the second one is an eight millimeter again I'm just using what I have be working fine though so far I don't want it to be too long to go in and hit that hit that sprocket everything seems to be good so far Mechanical CDI holders on, nice and tight. Now we're going to work on putting the mechanical CDI in. I didn't have a chance to locate any springs, but I did see where one person was able to wire these things open, and I reckon that's an, a permanent advance I'm not a hundred percent sure I may try to replicate the same thing they did and see if that works either way we should be able to get a you know get a current out of it a spark out of the spark plug regardless it may not run right but we'll see what we can do All right, we now have our outer mechanical CDI cover holder on installed we uh, went ahead and just wired these things open and yeah, if somebody don't do it you'll never know what it does so we went ahead and we're gonna see if this will do anything for us it may not it may just but then again I don't even know if this is the proper one so I, mean, I got so many different ones and they're on different numbers, different sizes. I could go to another 110 and look, but I had to pull it apart and then retime it. So this is about trial and error, and we're gonna give this one a shot. We're gonna go ahead and slide this on. Get let that cam pin catch it. I'm gonna get a pulse generator backing plate and the pulse generator itself, and get it mounted, get the wires ran over to the rest of the harness. And we'll slowly start piecing it together. Alright, we located the pulse generator and the backing plate we're going to use from our previous donor bikes. Uh, the pulse generator for uh, 200 ES Big Red, 185, 110, all of these should be pretty much the same. It's the mechanical CDI part that really. Uh, is what you need to get right as far as a you know, bike particular so we're going to put this on and get it mounted and we had to locate some screws again get it close Slip out of its spot. Okay. And it slipped out of its spot anyway. Get it back in there. Might need a bigger washer. That ought to do just to get by. 
and I chose this pulse generator because it happened to have it happens to have a plug-in similar to the one we need on this side maybe different color wires but I think that'll do it uh, we still have to wire in a round CDI plug I think it came with a square one this fake came with it but this particular plug sitting down inside the air intake or the air box so we'll get this wired up it's gonna look ugly wire nuts and stuff but if we can get it to run then that's a good bite all right the, the pulse generator is in cdi mechanicals in we're gonna start trying to get the wiring figured out now i still may be off the tooth on the time of time and chain but we'll find out when we get that far so right now we're gonna go ahead and plug the pulse generator in and come off an old bike so the chance it might not work at one of the tabs are bent over in there straighten that up a little bit Alright, so we got plugged in there. It's plugged in. Really all we got left is to strip the wires back and get the round plug CDI box hooked up. We're gonna get these wires stripped back. I'm gonna use wire nuts. It's ugly. I know some of y'all are gonna talk about it, but it don't matter. As long as it gets the job done, we can go back and change that later. This side's already stripped out pretty good. Electrical tape on them. Spread out the way you ain't gotta wire them so close to each other. I'll take a little tape off of this one too, if I can. Yeah. You did pause it? Electrical tape out of the way. A little bit of wear, better work area. Start with this black and yellow first. black and yellow on the plug black and red from the harness to the plug black and red Got solid black. Oops, sorry. That could be and blue and yellow. Okay, square it around. That's uh, pretty straightforward, don't you think? Now I need to get a coil mounted. I need to get the electrical CDI on here. Alright, so we have our CDI box in. I found a coil we're going to try. It goes this way. 
Again, I had to find some bolts for it. Go ahead and clean the surface you know, contact points between the coil and the frame. That way you can get a good, establish a good ground. Don't forget the ground wire. <laughs> okay. Good. Take your black and yellow from your CDI box. Plug it to the coil. That's where your signal is going to come from for the pulse generator. And I'll put a spark plug in it and see if we can't get it to get some fire. But first, we gotta put the pull start back on. I gotta locate bolts for it too. All right, so we got uh, the CD electronic CDI box on. We hooked an ignition coil up. This wire was broke. I cut it back, and fixed it. Uh, hopefully, this coil checks out. Here's an extra ground. I think it goes to the headlight. May not even need it. I'm gonna uh, get you to, you know, hold that. You necessarily got to make sure it touches the head though. All right. Pull. See nothing. Oh. Nope. Feel anything? No. Okay, nope. so we're not getting spark on this one. Uh, so we're gonna try and swap the CDI box out and see if that helps. Also, that bit I said the other day about the pull starts was false. That notch, and I said just because it bolts up means that uh, I should be able to use it well. That's, that was wrong. I had to shim this one because when it's too close to the crankshaft, it won't allow the, the recoil to pull back. So I put these shims in. Later, we'll just swap this one out with the 83 because the 83 takes this one. This is 84, and it takes the one I have on the 83. So it only makes sense to swap them out. But for the time being, we're going to swap CDI boxes. You know, I'm going to go with that first. It's my first guess. I just knocked the wire nut off. That would be one reason why people do not like using wire nuts. Okay, I got one. This CDI box come off a 200 ES with reverse. So, I mean, there's a good chance that it wasn't going to work anyway for this 110. But I do have another CDI box. I believe this one come off the, the 200X. It don't have reverse. But, you know, that's what I got laying around. We're going to give it a try and see. Make sure you get the camera on it real good. Can you see? Yep. Looks like well, I saw something. Oh, yeah, we're definitely getting sparked. So our issue was the electrical CDI box. Now, we're going to put this spark plug in. Spurt a little fuel in this intake neck. Pull on it and see if we can't get it to start up. So I'm going to put the spark plug wire on the spark plug, kind of tight, that's what I got to work with. A little carb and air cleaner down in here. No carburetor. If you got a decent engine, it ain't going to need a carburetor. All it does is regulate, regulate and atomize the fuels. Get you a... You got it? Full of water too. Oh yeah. 
I have to work all that water out of there. Just done probably gonna wet the spark plug. Right Heard a pop. Uh oh. Yeah, popping. Uh, you know, they don't necessarily mean it's gonna run. The timing could be off on it. Uh, oh yeah, it's shooting a flame out the intake. So it could be 180, 180 out. So that's gonna about wrap it up for today. We got backfire through the intake. I mean, it's sparking, it's hitting, we got compression. Uh, the only other thing I can think of is the springs on the mechanical part of the CDI are gone. I got it wired wide open. Not really sure what that does. But I, I think once I get the springs for it, it'll, it'll fire up and run. Uh, until then, just uh, keep an eye on our videos. I'll keep y'all updated when I get the springs and uh, we'll go from there. I appreciate y'all. Uh, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, y'all have a good evening.